This is by far the most exciting project I've ever been involved in my engineering life. No question. Hi, I'm Michael Brower, and I'm here to talk a little bit about these Motor City EQs. They're based on a couple of Motowns that I had on, that I found. I spent maybe four or five years looking for, for these Motowns. I got them from somebody from California, and um, I think that would have been probably mid 80s, maybe late 80s. And from the time I got them, I always dedicated one of the Motowns to my kick and one of the Motowns to my snare and every song I mixed through the 80s and 90s and last decade is um, two decades have all been through these Motown. So the thing is, um, this was a product that was never available to the public. That's, uh, that's well known. Uh, according to uh, Mike McLean, which was the maintenance guy at uh, original at Motown, um, he built like eight units in-house and there was like around another 20 or so that were made at a factory full with them. So this is the first time in history of recording that this unit is available to the public. Um, those uh, original units uh, that were made uh, by Motown for Motown, um, you, could, you could even you know, trace them all. Um, I think when we spoke with uh, Brower about this, uh, Michael told us like, uh, it took him like five, seven years to find them back in the 80s. So, I mean, finding them now is impossible. Um, you, you, could, you could trace all the units. I mean, uh, Brower has two, uh, Steve Jordan has another two, um, Henry Hirsch, the guy uh, engineering uh, for Lenny Kravitz, had one or two already, a few with collectors in Japan. You know, there's just a handful of them. This is the first time this unit is available. These essentially are my units. And <laughs> I think anybody who, uh, who gets this, they're gonna be happy. I and mean, again, I use it on kick and snare. You can use it on bass. You know, you can really bump them really hard on the bass and then maybe compress after, the, after it instead of before and just get this really nice round sound, which is what Motown was doing. I think Motown tended to EQ before, I mean compress before and then EQ with this and then compress again after. Uh, Tony Bon Jovi, is, who was a Motown engineer, I think would probably maybe look up one of his reports and documentations. Uh, he'll probably describe it. This is it. It's a Motor City EQ, and I did exactly what I would always do when I came, you know, when they had one ready. I said, all right, give me a kick, and I would always, almost always bring down 320, sometimes 800, depends, and then bumped up to 50 and 30, and, uh, it just sounded exactly how I remembered them. And I said, all right, give me a snare. So I, they gave me a snare. And the same thing with there, that usually, depending, you know, if I want a little more bump on the 800, but usually it was around 5,000, 12,000, a little too for the snap. And, and again, sometimes taking out that 800, it's just so smooth. It, it just opens up the snare a little bit. It's really, really cool. And, um, and then, of course, with this unit, you've got the gain, which is exactly like my unit. And also, like my unit, you can, um, you can bypass it and then, of course, turn on and off the unit. The topology of the equalizer uh, is, in fact, um, an equalizer that was originally designed for the film industry. Um, it was uh, made in a passive format 
by Cinema Engineering, Altec, and I think Langibin. And but it was very unreliable because it was based on sliders and it was fully passive, so you needed uh, to bring the game uh, up back again uh, by means of a mic pre or something like that. And, and it was very sensitive to the input and output impedances. This guy, Mike McLean from Motown, who was a very smart guy, came with the idea of isolating the EQ and then adding a line amp at the uh, output of the unit. So they could actually use the EQ as a standalone device. This thing sounds very simple for today's standards, but back then was not. Now, what is this? Well, about a year and a half ago, I went to Blackline Audio to get, it, get them serviced. And on, I started talking to my buddy John Neighbor and he goes, you know, wow, this is a great sounding unit. And I was like, yeah, there's nothing like them. And uh, he says, wouldn't it be great if we could just open it up and let everybody get some? And um, so we started thinking about it and they, they took my unit and really matched it exactly. So I had Michael Brower's Motown EQs brought to Black Lion to get serviced. Um, and we were talking, I go, Mike, you know, it'd be great if we could just make these. Um, let's see what's under the hood here to see what we could do. So we, Seth um, at Black Lion started looking inside. And then I remember my buddy Peter Rodriguez from Spain he always wanted to do one of these. So I, call, I go, Peter, guess what I got here? and his eyes like popped out of his head. I go, all right, Heritage is building this. You know, I got this call from my uh, friend, John Haber, telling me, you remember this EQ that we talk about, you know, like several times over the past years? This Motown EQ that is like impossible to uh, put your hands on, there were so many made and only for Motown. Yes, so I have two here. I say, what do you mean about you have two there? Uh, I had Michael Brower coming with his Motown units for servicing a Black Lion, say, no way. I'm in New York like tomorrow. About a year and a half ago, Michael Brower brought his, motor, uh, his Motown EQ into us for service, and we got it under the hood, and we were talking to our good friends at uh, Heritage Audio and told them what we were working on, and they were chomping at the bit to uh, be able to make one of these as that was kind of always a dream of theirs. So over the course of many weeks and a lot of time and effort, Heritage Audio has managed to make an incredible replica of the original EQ. So over the course of many, many weeks, we opened it up in Black, Black Line Audio in New York City and working on a daily basis, even sometimes, you know, many calls over the course of the same hour, going back and forth with Heritage Audio, we managed to pretty much reverse engineer it on a component by component basis. Not only was there very little information on what uh, this thing really is, uh, but the very few bits and pieces of info that were online were either plainly wrong or very misleading. We came with the idea of um, trying to design the EQ from scratch, knowing more or less the components involved by looking at the pictures, and then trying to figure out what was inside, what was the topology, what was the thinking um, behind those components. So I knew that Barry, Barry Gordy, the uh, uh, owner of Motown, was a very, um, he, wa he was a, a big fan of film industry, all related to cinema, so we went digging into the old uh, cinema engineering books, trying to find out uh, 
circuits that made sense with the uh, components that were inside the unit uh, by looking just at the pictures. Uh, so it was basically trying to solve a very difficult puzzle. Without having uh, uh, physical access to the uh, original unit uh, and with Ed being in his own lockdown in Lisbon for certain reasons and myself being locked down in Madrid, um, we figure out a system to work on the unit without being physically in the same room of the unit. The conception of this product has been the positive part of the pandemic for us, no question about it. So we had Seth in New York being our hands uh, in the unit and our eyes in the unit. And with the info he was uh, providing us, we were basically making our cal calculations and our maths and drawing schematics on pencil and paper. Uh, discussing over Zoom and Skype like several times a day. That was a pretty, that was a pretty amazing project to you know to be involved with. So basically, that's what we did. I mean, uh, we had a, a team of four engineers uh, working on the unit, uh, including myself. Um, it was this triangle with Skype and Zoom, uh, with information flying back and forth in between all of us three. We were working with uh, computer simulations just to make sure we were uh, going in the right path and comparing those uh, simulations with uh, the uh, graphics that uh, Seth from Black Lion was able to send us about the behavior of the unit. Heritage found that a lot of the components that make up the sound of this are no longer available. You just cannot get the components. So Heritage Audio did, you know, almost the impossible. Pretty much every manufacturer out there will go out looking for capacitors and say, these are as close as I'm gonna get to what I need, let's use them. What Heritage Audio did, which is absolutely incredible, is they actually went out and started getting custom-made capacitors just for them that are exact matches to the values that were in the original Motown. Um, a lot of the Motown capacitors just were custom-made back then, so it was pretty incredible that even today, you know, custom capacitors had to get made for this. They all sound a little bit different. The two that I had were extremely unique and uh, so they just matched it part for part and some of them I think they actually had to make I mean, some of these parts were just not available. First of all the mojo of this unit is not so related with um, input transformers, output transformer, typical things on mic rigs for example. The mojo is all about the passive EQ circuit, the way those bands are interrelated, um, how the topology, the whole circuit is designed, I mean, it's so clever. And that mojo is there. But in order to go, I mean, the closest possible to Brower's unit, we had a, uh, a transformer manufacturer to make a custom uh, input transformer exclusively for us, which is kind of like a replica of a, a model of a UTC transformer. The first unit that McLean himself made at Motown had a op-amp labs, uh, op-amp op in the output stage that was not very reliable. So when they move the production to an external factory, they change that to an Spectrasonics op amp. Those guys were never happy with the output stage, but you know, they were limited to what they had at that time. So we just simply put a tr all trusty 73 output stage with an output uh, transformer from Carnhill, um, which is very popular in other units. There's something about the warmth and the fullness and the punch that the Motowns 
uh, give that are incredible. This is by far the most exciting product that we've ever made. It's been from the uh, beginning of the uh, project to uh, this moment where uh, real units are about to hit the market. Everything has been so exciting, so challenging, um, even with us being locked down with all the difficulties, uh, everything was, you know, uh, against us and we finally were able to bring this product to you, to the market, for you to enjoy, for you to make uh, the best music possible with one of the best tools ever made for, you know, for audio industry. No matter, I mean, this is not a question of money. No matter how much money you have, you can't get these units. Now you can. This is a, this is a beautiful unit and Whoever gets it, you can enjoy it.